Today's event is how to be non-generic. One of the ways that we're gonna play around with this concept today is in the kind of the vein of monster creation. That's where we start to really throw crazy ideas at the wall is when we're coming up with like ideas for monsters and creatures and all kinds of like things that don't exist. It's where non-generic really becomes important. We're trying very hard not to be the same as everything else. I went through and generated a couple that are okay. They're okay ideas. These are prompt only uh, monsters. Also went in and threw kind of in a, a sheet of monsters. And this is like a really good technique for just getting some ideas down. Uh, you can then kind of like take things that you like. Uh, we'll just do this real quick because it's fun. Uh, we'll take things that you like from this. So I'm going to take this guy right here. Uh, clean up this bottom part right here. Save that out. Uh, and then we'll just send that one to, you know, image to image. Uh, I'm going to make that, lock that aspect ratio, bring that up here so that we can make that a bit bigger. And I'll just give this, you know, like a tiger, uh, monster, raptor, something like that. Uh, and I'll give it a nice little, like, you know, 0.75. I'm not going to take away my control adapter. Uh, and basically what I'm doing is I'm using that shape to kind of guide the generic structure, but really infusing a lot of different concepts and using the prompt. So this is like the basic, it's a basic tip and trick. Um, and then we've got, you know, like our tiger, tiger raptor kind of looking thing, right? Uh, so, you know, you, you got very basic techniques for uh, using some of this stuff. Um, obviously, if I were hoping not to get... Uh, as much tiger in as this, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more of this like kind, kind of lizardy looking um, type of vibe. I might say, you know, lizard scales or something like that, and try another one, uh, and see if I can kind of push it more towards the raptor rather than the uh, tiger. And this may this may do it for us. Maybe too much lizard scales there. I'll turn that down. But now you can kind of see we're we're controlling the shape. We're kind of getting that that I, core idea, uh, and then kind of playing around with the prompts to kind of infuse different aspects or character traits on this. Uh, if we turn this down a little bit, we might actually get more more similarities to the original input, right? So obviously this like. Uh, has a couple of ways that it could be very different. Um, you know, now we now we've got like a decent idea here. We can go clean up the feet and you know add in more details. But this is like a nice way of uh, ideating and coming up with things. The other fun thing is you can come in and add stuff on the canvas and then kind of re uh, imagine certain elements of this. So if you wanted to. I don't know, add in uh, horns or something like that. You know, we could we could go into the canvas and kind of detail that in. So instead of me just giving examples, I'll, I'll go do that, right? Uh, so we want to add in horns uh, and we'll do maybe some like dark colors here. And we're at the base. And then select that area and a horn <clears throat> tiger monster raptor. Uh, and we are going to be focusing on that part. And, you know, again, this is just a, I think, taking a step back, talking about the topic here, non-generic. What are we trying to do? when we're, we're aiming to be non-generic is we're trying to find different things that inspire us uh, and really make creative decisions about what things we want to be different with. Um, you know, we were, uh, uh, Glimmer, who's in the audience, uh, who's on the info team, and I were chatting with a an artist uh, uh, or heard this quote from an artist 
and I think it, it resonated with both of us, which is, you know, when you're making art, art is about making decisions. It's about creative decision making. And as the creator, you're, you're making a decision at each point to be more or less like what's out there, right? It's normal uh, or normative, right? It's like what, what is expected or what falls within expected bounds. And when you're trying to be non-generic, you're very much trying to be uh, non-normative, right? You're, you're trying to be different. But obviously, if you just uh, took the non-normative approach on every dimension, you'd probably end up with some surreal abstract art, right? Because that's really kind of eschewing all structure. So we're trying to figure out where exactly are we trying to be different? What exactly are we trying to be different with? And what is going to make this more or less uh, interesting for the world we're building, for the game we're making, the movie we're making, for our art, whatever it happens to be? How are we guiding the decision-making process and where are we injecting our influence into the process? That's really what is interesting about um, this type of tool, right? So now we've got, we've got horns on this guy. It looks, it looks pretty cool. Um, I like that. If we wanted to clean this guy up, we'd go in and probably like, you know, rework some of the claws and kind of get that anatomically correct. Uh, maybe add in some details, but this is like a cool concept uh, without doing a whole lot else. Um, so we'll take that, probably save box region only, turn that off and save that to the gallery. So we've got one cool idea here, just like our horn, horned raptor tiger, whatever it is. Um, this one's also pretty cool, um, but a little different. So somebody asked the question, how did, how did you get this? How did you get this thing? Right. Uh, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Um, I think this specific example was I, I took, um, an image that was just a bunch of normal animals, uh, on a white background and did an image to image for monsters. And it just kind of transformed things in different ways. And obviously, you know, some of these are a little bit, a little bit more usable than others. Um, but all of these have redeeming, have redeeming elements. Like I could probably take any of these and have some cool ideas with them. Right. So, um, let, let's take, for example, this little, little guy over here. What, what does this guy inspire me, uh, to do? Um, oh, I guess let's say save box region only save that little bit. I'm going to bring that out to the canvas and I'm going to clean it up a little bit so that we just got this guy. Uh, and we'll take that to image to image, right? So we've got this and this in my mind is like an armadillo, uh, dino, spined dino, uh, small curled up ball. I'm just playing around here and see what this gives us. Uh, so this kind of gives us another just thing to start with and iterate from. And every iteration is a creative decision. Now, I stretched this one out because I didn't change my settings. Maybe that's that's okay, right? I still kind of got uh, an interesting thing here. So maybe I'll just roll with that. Um, but, you know, we've got some cool, cool concepts here that we can now play with. Um, and, you know, I think the, the thing to do here is probably go in and, you know, clean up some of these areas that were maybe not truly in line with what this wants to be. Um, we might even make that tail a bit shorter. Kind of like I, you almost see this as like structural clay in some sense, right? You're kind of taking the shape and reforming it. And you've got a lot of pieces that are useful and then some pieces that need to be touched up. So you know, this piece here needs to be reworked. We need to take off some of these extra toes. It's like spine underneath here. Carve out this uh, random spine over here. Uh, this, these horns need to be a little bit bigger to be match up with one another. Okay, so bubble then. 
So, you know, take, take the puzzle pieces. We're going to do both of these at the same time. I've mentioned this in the past, but anytime you're doing pairs of things, you want to do both at the same time. And that just makes sure that they're consistent when you regenerate. Um, uh, maybe this needs some like toes to match those up. And so we'll take that and regenerate those guys and see what that gives us. And iterate from there. up the denoising string just a little bit. It's not too shabby, but yeah. Let's see if we can get this super consistent here. I like most everything except these horns need a little bit more. So just like uh, maybe ram horn, armadillo spine dynamo, something like that. Give it, giving it something to anchor off of. It's, uh, it's a little inconsistent here. Give it another shot. Give it another shot. I recognize I need to be looking at questions here. Uh, yeah, somebody's calling out. Um, it can be hard to be not normal uh, with AI art when you're just using a text prompt. Uh, specifically. I think that's that's absolutely right. That's why it's super interesting to ask questions like how do we how do we make things a little bit more uh, non-normative, right? When you think about what's happening with AI training and AI models, if everyone uses the same model, you're gonna kind of average out to have similar looking things. That's why anyone who's been in this space long enough, looks out at the world of AI generated stuff that's coming out and can pick it out really easily because the, the really low effort stuff doesn't do anything special. It's just using a base model. And you're like, I know exactly, I like, I see the model coming through because there's no real, there's no real creativity being applied. When you customize the model, you're changing that base. But even then your new model has its own kind of like baseline average, right? And with just text prompts, your AI model is kind of like pushing you towards the mean, towards that kind of generic concept that is inside of it. And you need to be able to push it in different ways, guide it. You can shape the noise using initial image. And we'll go through some other techniques to get some cool effects um, in just a minute here. But you're, you're wanting to really get your hands into the creative process and push it towards or away from certain things. And that is uh, where, where things get interesting. So maybe what I'll do here, let's kind of draw uh, a little pearl. And let's see if we can get this a little bit. I think if, if, we, if we have have this piece here, it'll be pretty good. Be some consistency at least. We may have to do this once or twice. It's kind of created this little crown looking thing. Uh which I is unusual. But I like it. Alright, this is I like this. Uh, Make it just a little bit, make it a little bit more pointy in here. We should touch that piece up. And then we've got like our nice little like armadillo creature thing. I don't know if you guys want to give this this fella a name, but Name naming is open. Do you want to nickname your creature Ramadillo? Okay, I'm digging. I'm digging that. I'm digging that. Uh, 
Okay, cancel that generation. Little Ramadillo. And it's this guy's gonna be a little finicky, but we'll take that. Call it a day for Ramadillo. Velocity here is what we're going for, right? So again, we took this guy out of this random sheet, asked ourselves, you know, what is what is this evoke? What is this like? What do we want to shape this into? And then got to this kind of creature, right? And these are decisions that you're making along the way. You're kind of shaping it, molding it, kind of influencing it. There's a lot more you could do with this, obviously, after the fact. Um, but these are these are cool. This is a cool technique, right? For for going through this process and you know getting getting interesting stuff out. Now, another thing that we can do, uh, let's take one of these and use it as a control net instead. Um, and, and, I, and somebody did ask the question, so maybe I'll I'll use this as as a, a example of what I did. You pass this in as an image to image. Uh, you could also, you know, pass this in as a, uh, IP adapter as well. Uh, and then we said, you know, something like a sheet reference sheet of, we'll say slimy, uh, gooey, oozy, uh, creatures. We're kind of thematically changing the whole sheet to be something a little bit different. I'm going to do a relatively high denoising strength because uh, we already have this structural piece uh, controlled through the IP adapter. It's going to kind of like enforce that this is a sheet of some sort. Um, and what this does is it gives us an entirely new sheet of characters. Again, I forgot to change my image aspect ratio, but that's fine, right? Because now we've got an entirely new set of uh, creature shapes that we can use and be inspired by um and it's just you know it's like a neat little trick for prompting you as an artist right it's, it's kind of giving you inspiration you're playing around with this and saying you know what is this what does this evoke or what are these concepts all land on for me um so we'll take you know one of these uh let's see which one we'd like i'm feeling like i think I think this is a nice little base uh, right here. Take that and then bring this out and clean it up for my purposes, which are going to be. I'm going to bring this out as a control net. I'm going to drop that in to canny. Let's see what we get here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now I've got like a generic shape that I can control with. And, you know, I can um, now really do whatever I want to do. So if I want to do like, you know, a, a tiger dinosaur. We already did the tiger dinosaur. I'm just like it's repeating in my head. Uh, let's see, what else could I do? Uh, give me some, give me some ideas, team. We need, we need some ideas here, uh, and we'll, we'll throw them in here. Zebra manticore. Okay, that's pretty cool. Zebra manticore, uh, and we'll see what we get with that. I, don't know about that. Um, I think we've got the right shape, actually. Oh, someone said feathered. Okay, we'll do that. A vibrant feathered zebra manticore. Now, with things like that, uh, we may want to give it some freedom on this shape here. Probably should have done that anyways. But uh, we'll turn this step in step down to 60%. Yeah, this is like, it's okay, but it's a little too tightly controlled. And you can see it struggled with a little bit of that. Uh, so we'll bring that down to maybe 80%. And then the weight is an area that you could play around with. So if we do something like 0.5, we'll, we'll, we'll likely get this, this shape of creature on the 
facing the left in this like pose, but it's got a lot more variability on the structure of the body. So it's kind of like a, it's like a suggestion, right? Suggest, suggestion for where things should be. If we do a little bit higher, like 0.75, it'll keep it a lot more constrained. Um, and this is another way to really keep a lot more control but it also does drive the um, it drives that vari variation in the model as well because the model may not have ever done this vibrant feathered zebra manticore in this shape without us um, controlling for it, right? So then we get this kind of like interesting creature, right? That is uh, it's got zebra stripes, but it also has these like vibrant feathers on the head. Uh, it's got, you know, a number of other things. What, what does this inspire me to do? Well, honestly, I want more of these feathers, right? Um, and so I am going to turn off my control adapter here and I'm going to draw in kind of like these like feather things on the back, um, with some of these colors, barring that using the color picker here. And then I will just in paint that that way. Uh, is that a little bit lower than 0.9? Maybe do like 0.7. And I just want to kind of like, you know, imbue that notion of feathers in to that entire back spine. Now I've got this feathers there and, you know, maybe I generate another one to see if I get any feathers that I like. Um, someone's asking about including the existing feathers in the in painting for consistency. That's, I mean, certainly part of it. Um, keeping it in the image, there is going to be this natural mechanism where the attention is going to look at what's in the image and try to make things consistent. So that is a piece of this. Um, the other element that we could do is we could, you know, take a snapshot of the feathers and kind of like IP adapter those, if we wanted to drive like that concept of what the feathers ought to look like, that's like another technique we could apply. Um, I think one thing that I, I'm, I'm just getting way too picky here. I just like this, uh, these feathers start a little bit off center for me. So I might like, you know, uh, just want to like go in and draw a bit more connection there. And that can be seamed up a little bit with the AI magic. Although I need to decrease the strength a tad bit. One more pass, and then I will be happy. Um, but you can kind of see how this becomes an interesting evolutionary process. Um, and obviously, you know, we can go in and add more embellishments of, you know, what am I inspired to do? I'm inspired to clean up these claws on the feet. I'm inspired to maybe add some, like, feathers on other other pieces of the body, like typically, uh, you know, you maybe have feathers on like the forearm and stuff like that. And it's sort of like, you know, it's like pe you're peacocking when you have these types of vibrant feathers. And so you're typically trying to like, you know, treat it like an adornment. Uh, but I, I think, you know, we get the idea of this guy's a uh, nice little creature um, that we can imagine on our weird alien monster planet. Um, but again, that you know, we controlled it using this rough shape that came from a just throwing stuff at the wall type image to image process. And we were able to transform it using control adapters into something that's really, really cool and useful for us. Um, it's one of the, the reasons why Invoke is structured the way it is, is to really provide you access to quick iteration and kind of doing things that are very, very, um, 
almost experimental using the other images that you've generated, either as controls or as influence. So we'll talk now about some other fun ways that we can get outside the bounds of generic normative AI uh, created creations. Um, and I think that's, you know, obviously like one of the best ways to do it is just to take it into Photoshop and finish it out as an artist, you know, like that, that there's a lot that you can do with a good base like this to make it your own. Um, but this is like the, this is the quick conceptual iteration piece where you're like taking a good base and coming up with stuff. Um, so the next thing that we'll do is maybe we'll take another of these creatures that we've got on here. Um, maybe this little guy down here. No, maybe, maybe we'll do something bigger. I think it would be probably more fun to do something with the character here. Zoom around, nab this guy, bring this up. And save that guy out. Uh, so we've got this now as our control, right? So we're gonna keep that as our control, but now, we're going to do something a little bit different. Monster Beast is going to be our prompt. We're just going to keep, kind of keep it in this like general vein of stuff. Uh, but now I've got some images that I pulled from the interwebs for various creatures. Uh, and I think I'm going to try like giving it a little bit of this vibe, right? So we'll use this as an IP adapter. This is a hagfish. Uh, really creepy looking thing. If I ever saw this in real life, I think it'd probably scream. Uh, it's got some weird stuff going on. This is a real creature. Thank you. For, you're welcome for the nightmares. Uh, someone said also known as a slime hag. Yeah. It's, uh, it's good. I mean, it's got, that's got monster name written all over it. That's in a, that's in a monster manual somewhere, I'm sure. Um, so we've got this kind of like picture here and I'm going to use it at a relatively low weight. I don't, I don't want to over index towards this picture. Um, but what I'm really looking for is I'm trying to get, you know, some of this like sheen, um, for our creature. And I think this will be, uh, interesting to see what comes out. I don't know what's going to come out. You know, I just, you know, we, we went on this journey together and now we're here. Uh, this, this part of the fun is just seeing uh, how this stuff uh, injects its own uh, perspectives on this. Uh, it picked up a lot of that kind of like, you know, gooey, light sheen, I think. Let's see if this come back. Okay, so we've got a, a little bit of that there. Uh, let's see what happens when we do our, I think this is a crawfish, right? Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, from the south, and so I feel like I should know crawfish, but if I'm wrong, you, you guys can correct me. Uh, but now we're injecting a different concept. No, same prompt, same structure, but now we've got like this new image prompt that's providing something a little bit different, right? And so there's part part of this is just seeing what happens and seeing what these different like inputs do. Um, this kind of made it like completely, uh, it's a little bit like a little bit too un under, it's like underdone in some way. It looks deep fried. Uh, so we're going to try to increase our prompt here. And then we might add in a text prompt to, we'll, we'll let it do a little bit higher. And then I'm going to do exoskeleton. Uh, crustacean and see if that kind of gives it a little bit more of an anchor for that image prompt to latch on to um, to kind of pair and pair well with uh, text prompts. So now, you know, this is purely pulling in a lot of that color. It's not really pulling in this like uh, shellfish type of thing. Uh, but now that we've got exoskeleton and crustacean, we will get a little bit more of those vibes.
yeah so this is a little bit a little bit more a little bit weirder right we're getting we're getting to some weird spots uh let's see what happens when we throw in this one Then we can start doing some real fun stuff. Oh, I like, look at that. It's got like some transparent spikes. That's an interesting concept. Kind of picked up. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I think we're going to go with that one. Uh, it's got some interesting looks to it, right? Uh, so we're not, this is not generic, right? This is something that's like, okay, there's something here that I like. Uh, it's got this like transparent element to it. Uh, it's definitely not like the app. It's not your average bear. Uh, and so we're going to clean it up a little bit. Uh, do some color in here. Speed this up a little bit. Shape perspective. Coloring. And then we get to do some fun stuff. Um, take, you know, some of these like shapes that came came with our control mat. Uh, still, this this part up here gets a little bit off center. Let me try to fix that a little bit. Mm. Same thing here. Let's put up the midline right there. Obviously, you know, be a little bit easier if I had like a Wacom or something like that messing around with, but take that as it is. Uh, what do I want to do here? Okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to take, kind of pull in this shape that we've got now uh, and maybe just have this do reimagine these two edges of that edges of that got some stuff down here that I fixed some stuff under here uh, we'll just do that one more time, clean up those bits, and then I'm going to get in and start doing some detailing on this, this fella, um, which I think is going to be fun. I'm excited for that piece. Uh, really do like this, like, translucent spine. It's kind of dope. Uh, kind of melded those on in a weird way. Okay, so I'm going to do undo. I am going to bring down our weight on this and do a little bit less denoising, just so that I can kind of clean those pieces up. It's just gonna it's gonna like really mess with my really mess with my enjoyment of this if these spines are like way too off center. Um, and it, it might be tough to get these in. This might be something that'd be better finished up in like a Photoshop after the fact. Um, it's just kind of align those pieces. I, I think I can probably live with this. I'll just kill this one. And a little bit of a neck there. Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll be fine. I'll, I'll live with it. I'll live with it. Okay. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of zoom in on just this one spot. I'm going to pull in the control uh, for this. Bring that strength back up just a little bit. And we'll also bring our denoise strength up just a tap. Then I'm going to get some detail on this. Uh, we can play around with this too. Let's see, we've got a 0.5 for our 
little guy down here. I think that's probably going to be fine. The mouth, because of our control, may have some weirdness that we might need to clean up. Um, oh, yeah. That, that's where it's going. Yeah, it's weird. I like that. Again, off center on these like spikes. I, I think to blame is the control image there, um, which we may just take take this off and see what we get. Uh, all right, so we'll we can do this head on its own. Yeah, someone said got some extra legs now near the head. Uh, I think that probably picks pick picked up from this um, this IP adapter image. Um, and again, why why it's why it's interesting? It's because that came out, and I said, yeah, I like I like that. I'm going to leave those in. We're going to kind of roll with that. Um, you know, maybe redo the bottom part of this mouth and. Gonna focus in on this. Let's see what we get. 0. 0.65. <laughs> and so we're making deep sea fakes. Yeah, this this creature is a deep sea fake. Uh, so kind of turn those into ears. need to correct those um, some other way. Well, let me ask the question, do I want those spikes on the head? Not really. As I look at this, I like the translucent spikes, but these are a little bit hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave, accept this generation, but then I'm just going to clean these guys up. Dude, that entire head, those little arms in. Yeah, this control adapter is off, so we're not actually using that. Oh yeah, That's some real weird stuff. I uh, like it. Uh, Okay. Just gonna take this guy off. We'll leave that head. It's, it's kind of cool. Uh, honestly, I think this is like dope. Okay, I'll just leave it as is. Uh, my menagerie of uh, creatures here. Let's review. We came from this to this by using our kind of nice little crustacean uh, image here as our influence for some of these like visual elements. And yeah, I mean, I think I'm gonna delete some of these guys uh, that we didn't like along the way. But yeah, like a nice little journey there. So we've got this one, we've got this one that came out, this one, we've got our like tiger, tiger lizard. So in yeah less than an hour we've already come up with four really cool concepts right um and again different ways that we got to each of these different ways of exploring and iterating uh you can definitely combine all of these together and, and really get to some fun places um so now i guess i'm going to ask ask the audience uh what ideas you all think that you are having problems with when it comes to making non-generic things uh, and we can kind of showcase a way to get there. Um, barring any like suggestions that are really interesting from folks, uh, we may just jump into some other future ways that are coming for non-generic images. Um, so yes, people are mentioning non-anatomical humans. It's weird. Getting into some really weird territory. Uh, <laughs> almost hesitate to ask this question. 
what do we mean by non-anatomical humans? Because there's some areas that I don't want to go. <laughs> uh, four arms. Okay. Okay. Four arms. We can do that. We can do that. We can do four arms. We'll, we'll make that work. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so people said four arms and fingers as hair. Weird, but also monstrous. So <laughs> we're going to give it a shot. Um, so let's say there's like a lot of different ways we could get, get to that. Um, four arms, it's pro I mean, probably going to be kind of a boring way to get to that, right? Um, guy in denim jacket, uh, cool sunglasses, long hipster hair. But we want a crustacean hipster. We want a guy in a denim jacket. Uh, give me a There's a square torch. Try this out. I'm really good at making those Fabio esque kind of people, am I not? Uh, Man, look at that. I wish I had hair like that. Look at that beautiful thing. Uh, so do I really think that this is going to be useful for demonstrating this? No, let me try this. Uh, clean concept painting. We've got a clean concept uh, Laura that kind of puts it on a white background. Sometimes background as well and see if we can get that. Do that. Maybe I'll force force this kind of concept thing. The white background. Do what I want. I'm just gonna do this on the canvas. All right. Um, let me make this ten or white background, grayish middle part here, and pretty high denoising strength. Uh, basically, again, I've done this concept in the past studio sessions, but I'm using the uh, initial image to kind of like really shove it in a direction that I want, which is giving me more of this like body that I can then add stuff to. Uh, and what I'm going to try to do is get, get to the forearms and maybe a weird uh, but I'm going to do like ignore the bottom half of the generation and then have it do uh, kind of like a and paint out like a hand. Uh, we'll do the point, we'll do one arm at a time. Uh, I'm going to do waving and so I'm doing, and I know this isn't like hacking it to make four arms, uh, but this is like how I might get a four armed person is like, you know, going and manually doing that. The other piece that you can actually go in, uh, and do is train in a Laura that has four arms, uh, Someone said they're going to be impressed if we can in-paint our way to four arms like this. You just watch me. You just watch me. Uh, it's already three. It's already three. Uh, we're going to pick up some tones. Do. Uh, this arm. Let's see if we get there. Someone said, okay, I'm impressed. Uh, not, don't be impressed yet. I'm sure we're going to get some really weird hands on this one. Uh, 
Yeah, someone said, okay. Well, now someone says, yeah, multiple arms is easy. Okay, well, <laughs> not anatomical humans. We're, we're going to take, take it or leave it. Come on. Uh, so we're going to get this. Maybe we don't want that hand in there for context. Um, just going to add in some stones here. And maybe this is a little too high. Maybe it's not high enough. I'm going to try to make it higher. Now I would, I definitely would like go in and probably fix some of this stuff. Um, but you know, you get the idea. Um, now what I'm, now I'm going to show you though, is, you know, we've got a guy with four arms. It's got some weird stuff to it, but look at that hand. He's got, he's got a hand. Uh, we're going to save this to the gallery. And then now that I've got an example that I can kind of reference, I'm going to pass this in as a IP adapter, right? And I'm going to say Gynage and Denim Jacket with four arm. And we'll see if that gives us something else. There's some variations here, right? It's like always nice if you've got an example to show it. Uh, oh, it doesn't want to do the four arms. Uh, let's see, maybe if we do like 0.7, we'll pick up that four arm that fourth arm or not. Otherwise, we might just have to like go in and enhance the things. Ah, uh, you know, I, I want to say this is like maybe okay. It's got it's got some it's got some potential here. I mean, he's got his hands in his pocket. His hands are up here. I mean, works. Uh, someone proposed open pose uh, or DW pose is what we're using now. Um, that would probably work as well. Uh, yeah, somebody said you can see it's trying but fighting with itself. This is because it doesn't have, it doesn't really have a good understanding of what forearms looks like. I mean, this is a great example of normative. It is normative to have two arms as a human. So you, what you really need is you need to show, right? You need to train the model so that its knowledge of what is normal changes, right? It is normal or it's possible that humans have four arms and this is how and where four arms happens. Um, I, I think some people are calling out, yeah, it, it is, it knows that we're asking for four arms, but it doesn't know what four arms ought to look like, right? And again, this is, this is where that piece of what is normative and why it's hard to get these tools to be non-generic, it's because you have to kind of show it the way. You have to kind of guide it. You have to nudge it. You have to, to really pull it into non-normative spaces and make the decisions that um, help you get there. Somebody has to try four arms. We'll give it a shot. I'm not like optimistic. I think um, one of the tools that will we'll see in the future uh, coming up is uh, regional prompting and that, that may help. That does seem like the word, the, the number four did help. That was some of the suggestions was like seeing you know, four arms. His hands look a little funky, but he's got his two hands in his pocket and his other arms. So, you know, we're kind of getting there. It's, it's, it's rough, but you know, uh, I, I think it's like ar arguable, right? Um, the last thing that I'm going to do uh, was give a sneak peek at, at one of those tools that's going to be coming that really helps with getting into these non-normative spaces, gives you kind of the utmost degree of control. Uh, and that tool is regional control, regional prompting. Um, so I, these are nodes right now. We're working on the UI. We'll probably have some cool stuff to share in the next week or so. Uh, but in the nodes, I've got a graph. Um, I won't walk through the graph because I think people would start, eyes would start to glaze over if you're not a node, uh, nodeologist. Um, but we can do some interesting kind of like some interesting stuff here. So basically I've got 
two boxes, one on the top, one on the bottom. I'm controlling this using a prompt that is only guiding the top and a prompt that is only guiding the bottom. And it kind of has to figure out how those two things fit together. Um, so I'm going to do like uh, head of a hyena. Uh, I think mask one's on the top. Not, we're going to see it the other way around. Uh, head of a hyena, beastly creature, and then mask two is going to be something like um, insectoid, arachnid, exoskeletal, body, monster, beast. Uh, and maybe we'll use our prompt here. Here, not the hipster hair. This, this is our like uh, mobile style. Uh, and we'll see what we get. This part's fun because it's like really weird when you throw different regional controls together. Uh, and I hope I got the mask orientation right. But without doing a whole lot of fighting, I've got this weird creature, right? Uh, and I think this is when we when we show this tool to you all, we are going to be super super excited about what this what you all do with it because this is going to be one of the best ways that anyone has ever had control over these tools. Uh, regional prompting control. We've got a really really refined workflow to make the regional prompting work really well. Um, and you'll, it'll integrate with everything else that you already use to control things. You'll be able to do like a control net uh, to, to, to really give it that structural base and then do regional prompting on top of that. So you're going to have really a lot, a lot of control. Uh, super excited about this. It's coming real, real soon. Um, but this is a fun little sneak peek at what is ahead from a technology perspective. It's very, very cool and very exciting. Um, so with that, I'll answer any remaining questions that I see come in, uh, and then we'll call it a day. So training a Laura is what you need. You're saying, hence all the Laura's I've seen. I think I've tried doing some simple Laura training for some of these with, uh, results leaning towards success. Um, yes. Basically, if the model, you know, this this notion of what what does the model know, it, it's really like what what is part of the the world model of this uh, this machine, right? Like what has what is possible in its universe? What is possible in what it has seen? And if it is possible, if it knows how that might work then it's able to really generalize and do a lot of different things. If it is like hard pressed to really think of a time it's ever seen a four armed human, for example, uh, then it's going to be harder to get it there. Now, not obviously impossible, um, as we've seen, you know, we've got these, these kinds of like four armed, uh, people that we can get it to generate when we guide it, right. We kind of show it an example of where that might go. Um, but yeah, like training a Laura helps you inject some of that context. So if you created 10 examples, 20 examples, 30 examples of, um, this like four armed human creature or <laughs> fingers for hair, whatever it is that you're trying to train into your model, then it's going to have that context. It's going to be like, oh yeah, I, you know, I know Bob, he's got fingers for hair. Uh, we'll, we'll prop for Bob and we'll get our fingers for hair guy. Uh, and, and it knows what that looks like, what that might be. It's like, okay, well, when fingers are on the hair, they kind of like comb back, like spiky mohawk looking thing. And they're all fingerly like, um, it's, it, it knows how to generalize its understanding of fingers, its understanding of hair and how those two could map together in that way. And then if you do a couple of different hairstyles, with fingers for hair, it'll start to understand, okay, well, when I want this type of hairstyle, since I've seen all these other hairstyles with fingers, that's how the fingers would map to this new hairstyle. Um, you know, 
it's weird, weird examples here because people are, are strange, but this is what makes things interesting and non-generic is when you start to get into these realms of uh, creation that are maybe non, uh, non-standard and atypical. Um, but yeah, fun stuff. Okay. Uh, I think that is, I think those are the last questions other than people, uh, saying that this regional prompting stuff is pretty cool and they want to see it, um, coming soon. We'll, uh, we'll see you all at the next one. Take care.